Hey y'all, what's up? Jamie, that's me here. Welcome back to the channel, honey, and welcome back to another quick chat. Now, first of all, I would like to say Happy New Year to everybody. I hope that this new year is amazing for everybody and they get exactly what it is that they want out of this year. You feel what I'm saying? Now, I also thought that it would be great if we go ahead and kick the new year off by starting to talk about Real Housewives of Potomac, okay? Because the girls got some things going on and some of the stuff I didn't get a chance to talk about on last week, so we're going to talk about it real quick, like, okay? So, Miss Candace Dillard decided that she was going to sit down and do this interview, right? With, um, I believe his name is Ricky, okay? So, she sat down, she did, she does this interview and she has some things that she wants to say when it comes to Miss Robin Dixon, honey. And y'all know I love me some Candace, but my faves are not like excused from being called out just a bit. So um, I'm just going to play this audio so that you guys can hear what Candace has to say about Robin. And then Candace Squirrel, I'm going to have to tap you on your shoulder because I have a few things that I want to say too. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into what Candace had to say regarding Robin and the things that she spoke on when it came to Candace's husband and um, her withholding her own information. Now, before we get into the video, make sure that you guys are coming into this video and you are liking it, okay? If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well, okay? Those are free ways for you guys to support the channel. So let's get into it. Everyone has to be honest if we wanna have some fun, right, Candace? I am blinking in agreement with you, Ricky. Yes. I have a lot of empathy for her and her situation, even in the backstabbery of it all with the two broke girls podcast talking about my, uh, my life. And even in, you know, her going behind a paywall to share her personal business when she's paid more than me to talk about her business on a television show. It almost wouldn't have been as bad if she had just not talked about it at all. Right. But you, you talked about it and then charged people for it. Mm -hmm. It feels like we're in the twilight zone, you know, cause like even, you know, sitting in that van and she's crying and she's like, I haven't ever done anything to any of you. And it's like, bitch, roll the tape. Like, what do you mean? You, you, you have, you have been part and party to a lot of what has been done to everyone. But now you're being tasked with telling the truth and you're deflecting and selling it behind a paywall. The name of this game is share your life, tell us about what's happening with you, and here and here's your check to do that. So when you not only stop sharing, but then it almost wouldn't have been as bad if she had just not talked about it at all. Right. So you you talked about it and then charged people for it. Mm -hmm. It's like I just, why, why would you, I don't understand why she would do that. And I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just so confused by a lot of Robin's actions in the last several months, because it is a departure from who I knew her to be. I think everyone, except for maybe one, is valuable to our show. And I think our, if we can get it together, we could Dude, we could go another season with this group. Ashley is valuable to our group. Mia is valuable to our group. Wendy's valuable to our group. Karen is valuable to our group. Robin is valuable to our group. I am valuable to our group. Um, NECA is valuable to our group. I want to see more of NECA and less of NECA fighting with Wendy. But um, we all add something. And... I, I wish that we could get back to a place where you saw that and, you know, less of this weird, I don't know what to call it. Listen, first of all, I have to acknowledge the fact that I loved how Candace named everybody that she felt was valuable and did not want to say Giselle's name. OK, in this particular clip. All right. Um, now it makes me want to go back, check out the whole interview just to see how she goes about avoiding and deflecting the name of Giselle Bryant. OK, um, I would love to see that because Giselle likes to do interviews and act like she don't care about Candace. But then we'll sit up there and answer every question that's asked about Miss Candace instead of figuring figuring out a way to to kind of like go around it or whatever the case is so yeah now I kind of want to see the whole interview just so I can see how she kind of you know um 
the flex off that. Now, um, y'all heard Candy say that she has empathy for Robin, and I loved how she referred to the uh, GEB's podcast as the Broke Girls podcast. Girl, I'm hollering. All right. But did y'all catch when she said that Robin makes more money than she does? I understand Robin being a part of the show from the very beginning, but Candace should be able, she should be very close to where Robin is financially for what she's making from the show, especially the way the fans have rolled the hell out of Candace. I feel like that's because Candace has really given y'all some content, whether you like it or you don't like it, even with Ashley, you know, y'all know how I feel about Ashley, but Ashley brings us stuff. You know what I'm saying? So if Ashley is making the check that's more than Candace, I would understand because Ashley brings us a lot of her life and she's been there from the beginning. Candace has given us a lot of her life so much so people have attacked her for it. So you mean to tell me that Robin hasn't given us a whole lot? But she's making more money than Candace? You mean to tell me that Robin can withhold a great bit of her storyline, a pivotal part of her storyline, and she still be able to make more money than Candace? Candace, you might need to get you a new agent, somebody that's going to be able to better negotiate with you. But let me tell you something. This is why I kind of wanted to have a one, two with you, ma'am. It's because you sit up here and you've done these interviews in the past about Robin. OK, now here you are again doing yet another interview about Robin. Here's my thing. I don't disagree with any of the interviews that you've done and giving your two cents when it's come to this, when it has come to Robin and her actions on the show or lack thereof or whatever. OK, I've been in total agreement with you. My problem is your ass up there crying over her. OK, that's the problem that I have. You over there being wine, 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 uh, crybaby is what it's giving over your friendship or whatever relationship with Miss Robin Dix and whatever Robin is going through with that husband of hers, that's on Robin. Robin wants to sit and suffer. I don't know why y'all have not realized that Robin has been sitting and suffering for decades. Okay. Let that lady sit over there. Okay. Let that lady sit in peace. Like they say, let that man cheat in peace. Let that lady sit in peace because that's what she wants. She wants to act unbothered like Juan ain't out here doing nothing or whatever. She wants to be a fool. At some point, you got to let people do whatever it is that they're going to do. So let her as be a fool. I hate to say it. I hate to say it, especially she don't even see you as a friend for real, for real. And you shouldn't really see her as one either. So I don't know what the hell you crying over her for. So you did the interview earlier this year. We see you on the show crying over her ass after doing these interviews and now you're doing another interview kind of going in on her i bet i see you crying at the reunion over robin and this damn friendship you're gonna have to be okay with letting it go y'all i do believe can get back to a place where y'all will be cool over time you and giselle never i don't ever see that happening you and robin yes but right now let that lady sit in peace with that man she got over there okay period um, what else uh, did I want to talk about? The fact that you sat up there and said that um, Robin and Nika are valuable to the show. That was nice of you because that was your way of trying to say that you don't want them to lose their check. Right. That's kind of like when they would ask Nene who you think should stay on the show, who should go. And she would be like, Cynthia should go. See, this is her way of trying to still play nice with Robin, although she's dragging Robin in a sense, talking about the Broke Girls podcast and how she gets paid more than her. And then she talked about the fact that this lady sat up there, went in behind a paywall, told her tea behind a paywall when she already gets paid a great deal of money to share her life anyway. Girl, what? OK, um. Yeah, you was trying to throw her a bone saying that she was valuable. Um, and NECA, I don't see her being that valuable to me. She showed her hand. Her hand has been um get her claim claim to fame off Wendy. And I'm not really interested. So you can go away from us with this. Um, unless she changes gears at some point mid-season or whatever, I'm not featuring in NECA or shit she got going on um at this particular time. Uh, but that's just, you know, that's just me, girl. Um, I'm gonna let y'all leave y'all thoughts and comments down below on that particular situation. All right. So y'all let me know y'all thoughts about uh Candace's opinions and things on Miss Robin Dixon. Next up, I want to go ahead and move on because I want to talk about 
about this Eminem situation with the GEBs. Y'all know that the GEBs, which is Giselle Bryant and Robin Dixon of Real Housewives of Potomac, these ladies have their own podcast known as Reasonably Shady. Now, y'all know Eminem is known for being slim, shady, shady this, shady that, shady, shady, shady. So these ladies submitted a trademark to own the name Reasonably Shady. Well, there is a time period when you put your trademark out there for anybody that may have a dispute to dispute it. And that's exactly what Eminem did. He decided to dispute it because I guess he wants to be the only person that owns the name Shady in any fashion, right? So they've been going back and forth. And I guess it's getting closer to time for them to go to court. So much so that Eminem has decided that he's going to get a protective order against both of the ladies. I believe it's so that he doesn't appear in court. But you know, I like to get into the articles because they're going to let us know exactly what's going on. Okay. So over here on People, they're saying that Eminem seeks protective order against Giselle Bryant and Robin Dixon in trademark dispute case okay they say the real slim shady is opposing the real housewives of potomac stars request to please stand up in court i'm hollering at the please stand up okay eminem has requested a protective order against the two reality stars on december 15th in their ongoing trademark dispute case regarding their trademark application for the name reasonably shady podcast now in the fouling the rapper opposed the tv personalities request made in late october that he appear in person for a deposition the grammy winner who has long been recognized by the slim shady and shady monikers and owns the trademark to use on his merch and records cited in the fouling that it would be unduly burdensome for him to be disposed deposed i'm sorry himself for him to be deposed himself due to his limited knowledge of the subjects at issue okay they're saying because of that the filing offered three other names including the rapper's longtime manager paul rosenberg who have superior knowledge to math mathers on the relevant topics and are able to appear at the deposition in his absence okay so basically Giselle didn't want him to show up in person. And Eminem said, but I'm not showing up nowhere. You also are not, you know, that important for me to have to show up in court and be present amongst y'all. That's why I hire people. That's why I have long money for people to go stand in my place. Because when have you seen me out and about? And you think I'm going to be out and about in the courtroom? Girl, you have me fucked up, okay? So the documents also argue that the motion filed by Bryant and Dixon was premature and procedurally improper as they have yet to serve Mathers who first opposed their trademark application back in February of 2023. They're saying that... Um, Giselle and Robin's attorney shared a statement with people about their recent motion for deposition. They said, it seems obvious to us that if you file a lawsuit, you should be made available to be deposed. Um, they go on to say that, um, stating that their team would like to question Mathers at least about his use of expression, Slim Shady and Shady. It's unclear to us that Eminem can be the owner of the trademarks and file this suit against our clients, but he will not make himself available um, you know, basically for discussion. Um, no, you ain't got to talk to me, bitch. I said what I said. You could talk to my attorneys running back to me through my attorneys. Why do you need me to be present? I feel like y'all want this man to be present because y'all think y'all going to be able to bat them damn green eyes at him and see that y'all may have a connection by way of eyes or something like that, girl, or family history or something. And um, he will see a piece of the privilege and would be willing to um, let y'all have the name shady and reasonably shady. Okay. In all honesty, how I feel, I just feel like y'all can come up with another name. I feel like this is giving y'all don't want to back down, but I feel like y'all podcast to me, in my opinion, I don't listen to it. So anybody that listens to it, feel free to combat me down in the comments, but I don't think y'all podcast is that amazing. Um, to where you can't change the name and the people won't catch on. I, I mean, it ain't like it's the Joe Budden podcast or something. I feel like y'all, I mean, and then that's the thing, because even the, with Joe Budden podcast being as big as it is, he can always change the name at any moment and people are going to follow. And with y'all podcast not being as big as his, y'all still have a name. Y'all still have the backing of Real Housewives of Potomac, the television show. So I feel like y'all should just go ahead and change the damn name, because I feel like if it's costing y'all this much money to hire an attorney to go back and forth over a fucking trade mark it's like girl let him have it he got it we'll just choose something else y'all should be that creative 
you know, and that confident that you can change the name and trust that your audience is still going to rock with you. And they'll understand the reason why y'all just decided to not to no longer be reasonably shady. That's just what I'm thinking. Y'all can, you know, continue to try this. But I just feel like if y'all spending out more money in this case versus what y'all are bringing in in my personal and I'm not talking about what y'all bringing in for Potomac I'm talking about what you're bringing in specifically from the podcast if you're not bringing in as much as y'all putting out just change the fucking name because at some point it's really not worth it but again that is just my opinion all right so let's go ahead and keep reading they're saying according to Eminem's recent filing his part his personal manager and business partner whom he has worked with since 1997 is willing to be deposed due to his firsthand knowledge of Eminem and his shady marks so this man has been working with Eminem since 1997 so I would assume he knows all of the ins and outs as he probably was the person that filed a lot of the stuff for on Eminem's behalf for shady so he would know way more in my opinion you know than Eminem and he also knows Eminem's sentiments when it comes to this situation so I think that that man should be okay to stand in his place okay um they go on to say the document reads it was under Rosenberg's direction that Eminem registered shady marks asserted in this case okay the filing also states that Eminem is removed from the daily activities and details that compromise that come yeah, compromise the use and promotion of his shady marks, even though he is the listed owner and signatory of the asserted trademark registrations. OK. Um, yeah. So, I mean, they go more into like different, you know, legal stuff or whatever the case is. Hmm. Stuart Parr, who has handled the performance licensing for many years, was mentioned as well. So I wonder if he will license out if he owns it, would he license out the term shady to other people? Again, it's not worth it. That's just what I'm, I'm for me. It's just it's just not worth it. It's not worth it, ladies. Just change the fucking name and call it the Green Eye Bandits podcast. Like social media has given y'all a name. And y'all can have reasonably shady segments. Yes. Still do the reason. Was it reasonable? Was it shady? Da, 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 da. Y'all can do that. Eminem can't tell y'all y'all can't do those little segments. I don't believe. However, the actual name, girl, just, just I mean, or if you want to change the GEB and what it stands for for y'all, change the GEB and make it the GEB podcast. Okay. But I mean, Green Eye Bandits podcast, like, yeah, that's some shit Candy Birds would do. See, that's how I know y'all not no good business women. That's how I know y'all not no good business women right out the gate that y'all done got tied the hell up with this Eminem thing. But more than anything, I'm thinking about how Candy would have did it. She would have took what you ho said, like when Phaedra and, and Portia, hey, Portia, how are you? When Portia was over there talking about some damn um dungeon that uh, Candy had, what Candy did, she went and flipped that bitch. Hello? She went and flipped it and made it a dungeon that she's still over here making money off of, making it a tour, a show. And experience and making bread off of it. So if the audience are referring to y'all as the GEBs, I would have flipped this shit and say, yeah, we are the GEBs. So much so we got a podcast. So make sure that y'all come because they're going to keep calling y'all that. So in all honesty, and I hate I'm throwing y'all a bone, that's free promotion for y'all outside of just the show every time somebody refer to y'all as the green eye bandits green eye bandits green eye bandits like y'all could flip that and make it something positive if you choose or desire i would be trying to trademark that that's the first thing i would have trademarked y'all want to sit up there and use some shit against me call me a green eye bandit well then I, I i i got one better for you how about i own the mother name how about that so now be careful how y'all use it since you're trying to use it against me and now it's a part of our podcast y'all not no good business women for real for real but guess what good luck i definitely wish you guys a look on this situation i do feel like it's not worth it and i do feel like going up against this man um who clearly is not backing down off of the term the term shady girl i wouldn't be playing with this fucking man girl i would have been changed the podcast ain't even been around long enough girl go change that fucking name and go on on somewhere y'all leave y'all thoughts and comments down below how can giselle and robin fix this situation for themselves do you think they should continue to apply pressure to keep this silly ass name or do you think they should go ahead and just change the name to something else and move the hell on let me know your thoughts and comments down below next up girl i want to talk about miss mia thornton because baby listen y'all know gordon came to social media a while back to let us know that he and Mia um are not together 
Okay, and he was over there pretty much dragging her. Now they did show us a mid-season clip or whatever of trailer, and they showed us how Gordon told her that she's been cheating for a while now, and she said that's not fair. He said if you want fair, go to a circus or something, and he had me screaming because he ate her the fuck up. Yes, okay. Gordon has been really upset with the fact that Mia is moving on without him. But Gordon, I don't feel bad for you, my love, because you definitely left your wife to go be with this woman. Okay, one thing about karma, she gonna hit. She may take her time, but she is definitely going to hit. You hear what I say? And not that she didn't hit, which is sad for you at a time when you've been kicked out your company. Money is limited. And then now your wife is leaving you. Listen, that's why I'm, I'm out here doing my best to be to be kind to people, especially when you're going through your struggles. OK, or whatever it is. OK, it's all about how you handle it, girl, because I'm not trying to have her spend a block on me. OK, and give me some fucking whiplash. Hello. So y'all be careful out here how y'all be out here treating these people. Because let me tell you something, Mia. Even though this is his karma, it's also a part of yours too. understand. So your shit going to come at a later time, too. And you over here so happy to be with this new dude. I don't know if this new dude is going to do right by you, B-I-T-C-H. Girl, he look like he may not. But that's not fair because I'm judging a book by his cover and I don't even much know that man. OK, but I know you, bitch, from what I've seen on the show. OK, but I don't see this panning out very well for you. I definitely want people to have a happiness. If you're not happy where you are, then get the hell out of the situation. Right. But, girl, you're not even divorced yet. So let's get into it. OK, so Mia took to social media on New Year's Eve to let the people know that 444 2024 is a giving that is this a, supposed to be like a wedding date or something? Is something supposed to be happening on April 4th in 2024? What is the numbers for? What's the symbol of that? As she's rocking a new ring on her finger with her legs crossed up on this man. And y'all know, number one, Gordon ain't got no damn hair on his head like this. Y'all know Gordon is back. is not that slim. Y'all know Gordon gives every big bit of a wide back, big back. Y'all know that, okay? And y'all know um, he not going to be able to hold Mia up like this and Mia not going to be able to grip their leg around Gordon like this, okay? Y'all already know that. So we know this is a completely different person. And based on the hair, we could tell that this is a much younger person than Gordon. But I want to get into the comments, though, okay? Because here go Ashley Darby saying, the heart is soft lunch. Girl, not y'all out here supporting this woman being with another man knowing she's not completely done with her marriage but then again this is ashley darby that we're saying ashley ain't done with her man and hey she been out here dipping it and doing it i ain't really mad at ashley though because we damn sure know michael was out here dipping it and doing it so i ain't really mad at ashley too much for her doing her thing so i guess this is on brand for her right but you got giselle bryan a person who loves to judge all situations at all angles to make the person that she don't like look really bad but when it's somebody she likes she uphold them in a bs and this is exactly what she's doing in that moment upholding mia in her bs talking about some okay 2024 coming in hot fake as hell fake as hell you got in talking about some 2024 already looking good girl what Girl, what? Are y'all okay? Girl, what, what is the tea that y'all know that we don't damn know? Okay, you got Dr. Contessa putting hearts under it. Dr. Contessa, this is what you and support of this too? You got Dr. Wendy telling some bitch, I am gagging. Listen, Wendy, perfect response. Perfect response as that's how a lot of us feel. Gag the hell out. New Year's Eve. So that is what's going on with Miss Mia at this time. Now, you know, the Internet sleuths had to do their job and they had to go out here and try and find out who this man is, Harpo. Right. Well, uh, shout out to the uh, Bravo Shay Room, because y'all know Mia posted this video, first of all, of her and Jacqueline. Let me go back to Mia's page. Um, uh, so this was the video I was telling you a guy shout, uh, telling you guys about. Shout out to the Bravo Shade Room. But I want to go back to Mia's page so that we can see how she and her good Judy are back friends. Yeah, so I just feel like it was a scheme that y'all set up to come to us with the BS with back um last season. Jacqueline. I'm not going to tell you not to be friends with somebody you've been friends with for years. I understand there's a lot of love there, but you better not ever let me disrespect you on any fucking level ever again. 
okay, as if you a throwaway friend or whatever the case, okay? So if y'all gonna be back friends, that's fine. I don't know y'all history or none of that, but don't let that lady ever try and disrespect you, okay? So then Mia says, missed my bae at, at the Jacqueline Blake, okay? Then Jacqueline responded and said, all love is truly a choice, babe. I look forward to us getting back to us. Every relationship has hard times, and I think this was a hard lesson that we never wish to revisit again. Ephesians 4.32, love you from the bottom to the top, okay? So listen, I'm not opposed to it. Y'all gonna be friends? Hey, who the hell am I? But Mia, don't disrespect or try to embarrass your friends moving forward, okay? Hello? Let's remember that. But in this video, okay, you can kind of see a glimpse of the guy in this video um, that Mia is with. So the internet sleuths decided that they finna come to the front and they don't found the man, okay? So this is where it pans in Mia's video, the guy that has the glasses on. So at the top, it says the streets work fast and they didn't got the boys uh IG name that boy Inc. So we are going to go over there and check out the page. But this is who they are alleging is her new boo. OK, girl, this is some messy shit. Here, let me pull this man page up. Girl, that is messy, girl. Not y'all coming into the new year messy as hell, honey. Girl, this is some stuff. This is some stuff over here. Incognito. Well, guess who's following him? Right here we see the Jacqueline Blake. Let me hit more and see who else following this man. Mia, are you following your man, boo? Because we don't see it. Oh, there it is. There go Miss Mia following this man. And you got her best friend following him, girl. So it must be him. And what does he do? He's a national radio personality girl this is wild here mia 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 honey now how did the people know it was him it had to be that damn jacket that he had on the jacket that he had on must have been a dead giveaway and people was like oh i seen that jacket before i know who that is i know who that is and that's how we found him so it looks like he's a dj here in atlanta mia B-I-T-C-H, let me tell you something. That flute and them cherry blossoms have been secured for your ass coming into the next season. Okay? Because Mia says she's going to have a good 2024 and she's going to make sure she get another Potomac contract. So the coins is going to continue to come in for her because now we need to know how the hell did you meet this man? How did this connection even happen? And how did y'all even get to this place to where it looks like she's engaged to this man? Wow, this man... Or I'm sorry, while this woman isn't even divorced from her husband yet. So, girl, that's crazy. I feel like, okay, sir, that's probably going to be your karma right there, Mia. You done got engaged to this man before you finalized your divorce or whatever with your husband. And when this man is done with you, because I don't know, I feel like he ain't going to do you completely right, but we going to see. I don't know. When he's done with you, we don't want to hear and see you crying like Gordon was. We don't want to see you pulling up this laptop with this bad resolution over there on TMZ to come and spill the tea to us about how, how he has done you oh so wrong. We're not going to be interested in seeing it, okay? All right? But I just wanted to come to the front real quick and just let y'all know what has been going on out here in these streets, honey. And it looks like Miss Mia is... um moving on to a new boo okay girl and not and engaged at that and not and the divorce is not finalized with her man and she over here on her page talking about some 444 2024 so if something's gonna happen in april when the hell is the divorce supposed to be finalized with the husband that you do have girl this is some messy here but listen that's all that i got for y'all at this time i want y'all to go ahead and hop down in the comments let me know your thoughts about everything that we talked about as far as candace speaking on robin eminem versus the gebs and miss mia with this whole new boo with the a whole new year that's all that i have i'm jamie that's me again don't forget to like comment subscribe share my videos follow me on instagram and twitter at jamie that's me and i'll catch you guys in the next one bye bye yeah. king of my city and code sack coming out swinging like soldier ass leading my people like quarterback but i study this shit i'm an almanac had to get up and grind knowledge is booming i'm here to apply came with the chip and the dip it just single to mind we finna do more to survive i need my check finna the block for the gooder we hitting the jeweler to flood out the Net. 
We don't do beef on computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we telling you rest yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck uh -huh. No map, I trust my gut for the quest, but drama I'm fully abreast yeah. I was ready for years and they died of me, uh -huh. all of a sudden they tell me they proud of me yeah. I been dropping these haters like calories, uh -huh. cross them out, came back with some batteries Stand for my honor, but you run no corner, packing a stick with a drum Wanna catch my bad one fumble, I done came